So I've heard from a few people that the worst part of the build process is the prep and painting of the exterior of the bus. We're about to find out. It's time to paint this, baby. Hey everybody, welcome back to Love Always Adventure Off. And this video has been a long time coming and I know a lot of you have been asking for it since you saw a video of the bus not painted and then all of a sudden the bus was painted and we didn't post anything about the painting process. I have been dreading this process the most out of the build. And so this video is really important to us. I'm gonna talk about our entire process and how we painted our 38 foot Bluebird flat nose school bus. In the comments, I wanna know, A, if you have a school and you've painted it, what was the hardest part for you? And two, if you're not a schoolie person, but if you were to build a schoolie, what phase or portion of the build out would be most daunting for you? Anyway, let's get down to it. Here we go. Hey friends, we're the Browns. Chad, Katie, Addison, and Kenya, Milo, and Charlie. We live to love an adventure. This is our story of leaving the norm behind to travel the United States full time, spreading love and encouraging others to do the same. Our family motto is love always, adventure often. So hit subscribe and join us for this incredible journey. So if you've watched any of our most recent videos, you know that finding the right paint for the project was really, really important to me. We had a couple criteria. One of them was cost, obviously. We could have gone auto paint and had a wide array of choices of colors and the paint would be good and all of those sort of things, but auto paint is so expensive. And uh, we honestly, we just didn't want to spend $1,300 just on paint for our bus. So the, the other option was Rust-Oleum. And as you know, in one of my past videos, Rust-Oleum wasn't a great choice for us because we really wanted a good custom color. We wanted to be able to pick the color that we wanted for our bus that really kind of represented our journey um, and how we felt about our bus and all that kind of stuff. And honestly, white, gray, black, red, or any of those colors were just not gonna do it for us. So we wanted something that we could customly tint. So I was in conversation with one of my cousins, talking, telling him my, my woes, my paint woes, and trying to find the right material. And he said, hey, at Sherwin-Williams, there is a product called Direct to Metal Acrylic and it's what they use to paint garbage cans and you know big dumpster garbage cans and a bunch of other pieces of equipment that are outside all the time and just get beat to heck and so you might want to check that out i think they can tint it went to sherwin and uh as you saw in, in a couple videos ago we got the paint we got it for cheaper than we thought we ended up getting on a contractor price we ended up getting it for 40 dollars a gallon um and, uh, and we could tint it any color we wanted in their entire color book. It was awesome. So we got the color we wanted, we got a good durable paint, and, uh, and, and it worked out perfect. The next thing was prep. Prep was probably my most dreaded point. Like I, I knew we needed to prep it really, really good. And, and that was the other thing is prep in prep was, are we gonna spray this or are we gonna roll it? Uh, or are we gonna brush it? And I actually played with rolling it. I played with brushing it in just a spot on the side. Honestly, for me, I just didn't like the way that it looked. It's probably my skill level at brushing and rolling, um, but there was, it, when we rolled, there was stipples. When we brushed, there was brush lines. And all of that was not really the look that we wanted for the bus. So we decided we needed to spray it. So in deciding that we needed to spray it, there's a lot more masking that has to happen. And we also need, more equipment. Uh, so I found a, a cool, the same spray gun that I borrowed from a family member that we sprayed the interior with, I borrowed for the exterior. It's an airless battery operated sprayer that just has a quart can on it. So we have to refill that every, but I was so surprised how little I had to refill that. Um, there's not actually a ton of surface area because we weren't painting the roof. And that kind of came as a surprise to me. So I didn't realize that. Once you take away the roof, once you take away the windows, um, and, and there's just not a ton. So we ended up not having to refill that little quart canister all that much. Masking, masking, sanding, sanding, more masking, more sanding, more masking, more sanding, 
and then a little bit more masking and then a little bit more sanding. We, for three days straight, we were masking and we were sanding. One thing about painting I think the most time consuming thing has been getting all of this reflective tape off. It takes forever, even with the heat gun and a scraper, and then the residue is just there forever. And uh, I'm just sanding the residue as good as I can to get it off as much as I can. But that's by far been the most time consuming is getting all of that tape off. Make sure you really portray my anger and frustration with this glue. I'm at the best angle for anger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know I'm smiling right now, but I am not happy. This glue is the worst. <laughs> Don't be deceived by my I'm, smile. I'm not happy about this glue. <laughs> oh, Katie's fixing unclogged toilets. That's clogged toilets. Unclogging clogged toilets. I'm scraping this glue off for hours. I'll see you next week. Once this glue scraped off. I'm really disappointed in you, bus. <laughs> How dare you put this glue on your back. <laughs> I'm telling you, the prep was the hardest part. We would prep it for a day and a half, that phase. We'd pay, you know, that section we would prep for a day and a half. And then it would take... 25 minutes to spray and and it just went like that and then we pulled the masking off in an hour and it was just like it, it was kind of blew my mind that we would spend a day and a half prepping it and then it would just spray in minutes we were really particular about our masking one thing that we realized is that the blue tape blue masking tape didn't stick to a lot of areas of the bus we had to get that stronger yellow tape which actually made it a little bit harder when we were taking the masking back off because it, that tape is so sticky. It was also very important that we got that yellow tape back off within a day because that yellow masking tape will leave a residue if it's on for very long and it won't come off very easy. It'll tear before it comes right off. What are you up to, girl? Masking. Masking. Getting all the masking on the window. To paint this thing. So, have you get some paint on here? Yes. I'm here. excited that you're doing all the masking for me. <laughs> yeah, I work. Doing a good job. As for the sanding, sanding we used 50 grit sandpaper, and we really, really roughed up the the old paint. Now the DTM paint is called a direct to metal. That's what DTM is. And so it's made to go right onto the metal. However, I was told by the paint shop that we bought it from, Sherwin Williams, that if we roughed up our old paint enough, like actually put grooves in the old paint, um, the new paint would adhere to it no problem. So that's what our goal was, 50 grit sandpaper. And you guys, we sanded until our arms fell off. It was so much sanding. We went through so much sandpaper. We were using an oscillating um, vibrating sander and we probably went through, I don't know, 30 pieces of sandpaper on that thing. Um, I guess that doesn't sound like that much now that I'm saying it, but it felt like we were just ripping those things off and putting them back on because you'd hit an edge and it would tear it apart. Um, so sanding was a really, really big deal. We had two sanders going, a couple people sanding. Otherwise, it would have taken a week for us to sand this thing the way that it's supposed to be sanded. And even then, we missed spots or we didn't get them sanded enough and the paint didn't stick and we've got to now sand them again and repaint it. So sand and make sure that you prep this, this really, really well. After we sanded, before we masked, we washed the entire bus really, really well. We sprayed it down with water, wiped it down with towels, um, and just made sure that we that we washed it really good so that there wasn't any remaining dust from us sanding so that the paint would not stick to the bus. So I think that's a really, really important step. Wash it really, really good before you start painting. Now, here's another lesson, a little tip. We 
didn't dry underneath the rub rails and underneath the bumper and on the sides of the windshield and that stuff good enough after we washed it and when we sprayed water actually came out of those areas dripped down the bus when you wash the bus dry it really good and even if you can wait a day or two after you wash it to let some of those areas dry out really good all right so yesterday i got uh one side of the bus painted uh, we got all masked and painted and uh, we love the color it's beautiful so because of the space we're in is so tight uh, we're doing one side at a time basically so today i'm working on the back and then we'll paint that i'm not looking forward to uh, scraping that tape off and then we'll have to pull the bus out because this side is so close to the fence we'll have to pull the bus out turn it around and then do the other side, just the, the same way that we did this side. All right, that brings us to spraying. So I learned my lesson the hard way. The first side that I sprayed is not near as good as the second side that I sprayed. And the problem was is that I went too light on the paint. I was trying to stretch the paint, I guess, not use as much. And so I just looked at it. As soon as it had color covering, I moved on to the next spot. And really what I needed to do was coat that a little bit more and let there be some buildup so that it, when it dried, it would be nice and smooth with a nice sheen like a car or, you know, like your wall or whatever. And on the first side that I painted, I just went too thin and it's a little stipply and it's got a little bit of a texture to it. And I learned my lesson on the second side and the second side looks really, really good. Um, but unfortunately, it had already pulled all the prep down off of the other side, so I didn't get a chance to spray it again when I realized that this was the mistake that I had made. So just make sure you put a really, really good coat on there, get it really piled on, and, uh, and make sure that the sheen is good. And it, I mean, it takes a lot to make this paint run when you're spraying it, and so you can get a good coat on there before you ever risk running or anything like that. Then finally, as you're pulling your masking, just be really careful. If you just go up and rip the masking off, it can actually pull the paint with it. The paint's so new, it hasn't fully adhered to the, to the surface. And so it can be attached to the tape or the paper or whatever. And if you pull that masking, it can run the paint. We did that in a couple places and now we have to re-sand those places, repaint them. Um, we learned our lesson. So basically what I started doing was just taking a razor blade and just cutting all of the edges of the tape before I pulled it off. And that seemed to solve the problem and we didn't have any more paint runs. But all in all, we're really happy with it. Are you happy? Happy. It's blue. So now we've got to pull all of the masking off and this morning she's going into the, uh, the bus doctor. She's gonna go into the shop and get a few things done before we take off a full lube job. I mean a he, sorry, it's Buster. It's not a she, it's Buster. So my friends, that's it. That was our painting process of our 38 foot Bluebird Schoolie. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope you got some little hints in there to make your process go smoother if you're actually doing it. Or I hope it was just entertaining to watch me <laughs> make mistakes on our bus. If you're not, if you don't own a Schoolie, you're not building one. Also remember in the comments, I wanna hear if you have a Schoolie and you've painted it, what was the hardest part or what part are you fearing the most of the paint process and if you don't have a schoolie or not building a schoolie I want to know as you think about building a schoolie because I know if you're watching these channels you've thought about it what would be the most daunting part for you if you were building a schoolie anyway thank you so much for watching if this is your first time watching and you haven't yet feel free to subscribe I do two videos every week and part of them is our build part of well we're pretty much done with our build so it's going to be more adventure and a lot of it is kind of hints and tips videos like this so don't don't be afraid to subscribe comment like share it we've been gaining some serious momentum and we are so so thankful also coming up t-shirts available 
So we have three designs of t-shirts. We're getting ready to sell them. They will be on our website, lovealwaysadventureoften.com, available for you along with coffee mugs and stickers. So you can go check that out pretty soon. We'll have merchandise there for you to buy. We, we got these shirts, we started wearing them in the videos and a lot of people started asking, where can I buy one? When can I buy one? When are they gonna be available? So we're making those available. So thank you so much for all your support. We love you, we love this community. This is exactly why we are doing this channel is because we knew if we were authentic and we were real and we shared our struggles and shared our journeys that we could build a community of like-minded people and just awesome people that encourage us along the way. So thank you so much and remember, love always and adventure often. Wow, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy seeing our videos as much as we love making them. Don't miss a single adventure or bus moment. Make sure you hit subscribe and share with everyone you know. We'll see you next week and remember to love always and adventure often.